But even if you are inspired by something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue, mm. even if you are, but you flip it so crazy or you show the true deep complexities of it that people have not really seen before, mm. that's still uh, uh, something worthy of achievement. It's true. You see it? what I mean? So that's your style. Because you never know what the thing that you're contributing to. For you, it might just be a, you know, a regular day at the office, but to a culture or a scene or a person that you're competing with, that to, that to an audience is, wow, never thought of that before. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Well... Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be, choose to be, want to be, you don't want to be anywhere else, it's not worth it, it's good for your health to be right here. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk, hold tight, b-boy documents, always on side, and they up for this one, yo. Um, <clears throat> it's about that time. If you checked out the television app, you know we're about street culture, the sport and art, and uh, I feel like the buck kind of stops here with my guest, this gentleman right here. He was early doors hip hop. Um, among a handful of others, I might add, this guy though pioneered the breakdance and the b-boying, Micron through to Mastermind, through to <laughs> Sidewalk, the crew, London All Stars. I mean, I'm bouncing back off times and data and information I'm, I'm more than happy to accept that this journey is with the captain the man the master Dolby D inside the place <laughs> thank you for having me Killer Killer honoured uh, yeah man it's fucking I mean I'm just gushing man it's like look at this. trust me guys like this is one of the pioneer this is the, the pivotal gentleman in the whole scene what do you know well I know that I'm deep deep in that b-boy mind state Cutting rugs, hitting shapes, spinning on the floor like I had on ice skates. Head, shoulders, elbows, knees and toes. Dirty sneakers, dirty hats, dirty clothes. Manipulating music with my superhero flows. I implode and explode any which way the wind blows. I go off in battles and stage shows. I get you bugging off the way I froze. It ain't easy, but it's the life I chose. I live it, so when I give it, I push it to the limit. I'm icy like Corey, and I'm fresh like Freddy. I glide like the kid, and I'm swift like Kenny. That's why I'm so dynamic when I rock so steady. I got that wild style, plus a crazy Eddie. And I got them new things like Terra and Eddie. I'm ever ready to cut the rug like a machete. I laid it down so hard that you will never forget me. You wish it was double D, you're not even one. Don't get too close because you might get bun. Freestyle, by the way, that was a little bit too, too easy. <laughs> That's your entertainment it's for you. It's the way I tell them, man. <laughs> Let's get it started. Tell us the oh, stories, well, I guess man. when I tell the stories, uh, I tell it with the same thoughts, feelings, emotions as it happened. Mm. It's not that I'm there and still there, it's just that that's how it happened and that's how it was. Mm. And that's just how I tell it. Mm. So we're in the days of pound notes, half pennies, yeah? Four channels. Channel 4 just came in. BBC One, ITV, BBC Two, Channel 4. The legendary box. Yeah, no cable, <laughs> no internet, no mobile phones. Yeah. So that that's the era. Um, and... So those days, I think everyone saw everything then. If there was a happening mm. on TV, whether it be one of the four channels, mm. everyone would know about the happening. Mm. Do you see what I mean? Whereas mm. now there's so many things, cable, this, um, different internet sites and stuff. And it's just all there, yeah. Information's everywhere now, whereas there was only a few places before. So mm. everyone saw everything mm. more or less at the same time. But with the hip-hop journey, I think it was more a case of the fact that I lived in New York in around 1981, 82. That actually put you in an upper hand of knowledge and, and almost importing it over to the UK. It, or you saw it being imported. Yes and no. I mean, <clears throat> I don't want to big up myself like that. Yes and no. But what, what I did see and what I do know is the culture. Yeah? Um, the culture. It's, to me, it's just black music culture. 
and it's hap- it's the same thing in many different um, genres of music. So I'm from Trinidad. I understand the calypso mm-hmm. of music and the steel pan and the jump up, jump up. Mm-hmm. I understand the vibe, yeah? I, and growing up in, in London, the most predominant for black people in the country at the time were West Indian mm-hmm. and most predominantly Jamaican. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, there weren't the Somalians in then and mm-hmm. that. There wasn't too many Africans as such around then. It was more West Indian. Mm-hmm. And the sound boy culture and, the, mm-hmm. and that, that's a derivative of reggae music. And so that was almost, that was that for British culture, that was like a natural... Because obviously, Cool Herc had the breaks, and he came from Jamaica as well. He came from the, he came and imported this idea of like mixing and blending and and DJing. Well, this is one of the things um, um, I want to get across actually, and say with regards to the culture we call hip hop, it's like that's a bit divorced now of the mm. culture itself. So mm. it's its own separate culture, mm. and that's cool, and that's all good. But really, it's the same thing. Soundboy culture is the same thing. You take a record and you do something different with it. You mix down live and direct to accentuate the the rapping, toasting, chatting, Mm. whatever you want to call it, form of. It's not singing. Mm. It's that talking type, cool talking type thing, Mm. whatever you want to call it. Mm. Now we've got our own voice in the UK with regards to grime and that. We're speaking in our own language, our own lyrics and, do you know what I mean, our own slang. And we've got our own music as well even though I think trap is grime and grime is trap, really. <laughs> but yeah. we've still got our own Emerges, style. Still a merge thing. We've got our own style, our mm. own voice now yeah. as such. Um, so in Jamaica, that's how they do it. That chatty, using the records, mixing mm. thing. In London, we've got this now, but we've only got this now. We didn't have it then. Mm. But we was very heavily influenced by anything coming from America and anything coming from Jamaica. Yeah, yeah that's right. Or the West Indies. Yeah. So we've and anything coming from Europe. Mm. So to me, at the time, around those times, England, London was the center of the world. We saw everything. If you're in different oh, parts of it's so true. If you're yeah. in parts of different parts of America, yeah. you're in New York, you may not see what's going on in in Arkansas. No. Do you see what I mean? Right. And so on and so forth. But in sort of London, England, or well, England, UK, if something's going on, everyone saw that something. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? I, do, I know exactly what Especially you Especially back then. It's the gateway. It's the gateway to Europe. So therefore, everything. Exactly. We see everything. Yeah. We've got our our point of view, everything. And it still is to a great extent. And that led me to coin the phrase, Covent Garden is the centre of the world. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yo! Now listen, we've talked about this area of the world a lot of time on the podcast. For those of you just joining and, and you know, recently subscribed to the facts. Uh, yeah, Covent Garden to... Uh, to us, I guess, is like um, Rock Creek Park to New York or some shit. It's a, it was the epicenter, some would say, of, uh, of breakdancing and hip-hop being integrated, brought in across from the other side of the pond and uh, beholden to uh, battles of sound system graffiti, b-boying, where you were very much a part of, again, with a handful of others, um, and I'm sure we'll get them on the podcast eventually, but to speak to the man at the top of the tree, tell me about that time. Tell me about that time. Covent Garden, centre of the world. Um, this is my perspective on it, yeah. I mean, other people have their own perspectives on it. It wasn't just me that made Covent, do you get me? Mm-hmm. I came down and Covent was a thing, not a big thing then, mm-hmm. but it was a thing, yeah. And I became part of that. And help to make it bigger. So who else was there in the, in that, the mix? So you, you know, let's uh, let's name drop. We'll pick them up later. All right. So this is this is the real story, and this to me is the biggest story of the WD story. Yeah, beautiful. Which ties in almost everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. So you're into hip hop, blah blah blah. Da, da, da. Then this Buffalo Gals comes out. Malcolm McCown, Buffalo Gals, nineteen eighty two. That comes out. He's got the whole culture wrapped in. He's, wrapped, he's gone to New York and he's wrapped up the whole culture. Yeah, he's got the graffiti, the breaking, the rapping, blah, 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 everything, yeah? But the breaking. The breaking now had not really been released like this to the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Breaking as such. And it's the Rocksteady crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah? What you've seen in that video is 
the blueprint of everything. You see in man, top rock, fly. I forget his name and he's top rocking, he's in the red. And he goes, whoa, whoa. Like Comment that. below if he you goes, know, you know. Wee, wee, like that. But it was just so, if you know top rocking, you know just that little bit is so nice. You got footwork from all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. different types of footwork. You got frosty freeze, body slamming. You got the flips, you got the windmills, you got back spins, you got head spins, you got swipes. Just A to Z. You got all foundation moves, Mm -hmm. most foundation moves in there. Mm -hmm. And the music, because really it's all about the music. It's the music generating everything. But to me with hip hop, I feel that it was breaking specifically that made it more than what it would have been. Mm -hmm. Every musical culture has a certain dance associated with it or dances associated with it. Whatever, it could be a little little dance or whatever, or a big dance, <laughs> yeah? But they all have their, but now hip hop's coming, this is its thing, yeah? And B-boy, yes, yeah, that naughty little boy. He's gonna mm. do some naughty thing, <laughs> yeah? It's that culture, yeah? And breaking is really a, a, a exploration of what is physically possible with the human body. And breaking, I believe, believe, encompasses anything that is humanly possible, but you translate and put it into this dance. Yeah, it can borrow some anything. That's why there'll never be another dance like it, and there's not such a spectacular dynamic dance as it. I and mean, this is no disrespect to other dances, but if you get to understand this culture, it's that dynamicism, that explosiveness, that oh my days, what mm. of it that is breaking, what the word breaking means. Going back now to the culture and living in New York and understanding the culture, people dress now and hip hop is suede pumas and fat laces, mm. your name buckle, mm-hmm. uh, that's hip hop, yo, mm. yeah. It is, but to me it's nostalgia because that's just how people dressed in New York at the time. At the time we dressed. Yeah, I feel that. F- Farrah's. Yeah. Yeah. Gabichis, Fred Perry's. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't relate to the what they're We, They don't dress like that. They dress Lee yeah. jeans. Yeah. 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 Shell toes, fat laces. That's just mm. how they dress. That mm. was just the style at the time. Gooses. Mm. That was just the style at the time for them. I kind of mixed the two a bit. You know what I mean? A little flavoritism. Yeah. yeah, man. Come <laughs> right? on. You can that... only see this half of the show if you're watching. Down below, you got some mad b-boy bits going on down there with the shoes and sneakers. <laughs> I'll tell you, man. He's ready to take it out downstairs Cause... when we finish. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was another part of the culture. The fashion. Yeah. And how you dress. And how you presented yourself. Yeah? That's part of the culture as well. Some, mm. some say that's the fifth element yeah, that's missing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a very big deal. And that's another thing what I know they know about the Dolby, yeah? Mm. What's he wearing? What's he like? Oh, my days, look at what he's... Yeah, yeah, some picture, That was part of it. Some poster boy shit, man. That like, was part of it. We're talking about the 80s. Where, where yeah. was the... You have to be on the street to be seen, and there was no internet. You just had to make an impact, wasn't it? That was kind of the age of those. So when a man steps in a dance, and he's got the three-quarter length white goose, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> he's got the... It's game over, get out of here. He's got the Lacoste <laughs> t-shirt on. <laughs> he's got the Dolby D name buckle. Dolby D. Come on. Yeah, you done know. He's got the Lee jeans. Yeah, where'd he get them from? Or he might rock the Lois. The oh, Lois. Geez. Oh, you know the Lois. Yeah. No, we don't the baby like, blues. No. Yeah. Or the Ferrucci's. Yeah. And I don't know. Might drop a little Diodorus Yo. one day. Yo. Or I might go for the Adair Centuries with some mind out of fat laces. Because I didn't have the shells quite then. So how old you have been at this time? At this time, roughly. Because uh, I'm gonna get my uh, I'm gonna get my timelines straight in my head. How old have you been at this time? Where Covent Garden uh, and the aforementioned. So I'm. I've just turned fifteen. Fifteen. But I've obviously 15. started being into hip hop from thirteen. Yeah, from being in New York and uh, and being in New York and liking the music from there and getting the bug from there. Um, wow. And then I was really into the rapping. Mm. Not too many people know this. I was rapping before I was even knew what breaking was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you done know. Big shout out to MC Positron, my first rapping partner. You done know. <laughs> you know you watching right yeah. now. Hold hell up on Big the shout out to Pretty Boy G. You know I burnt you at Covent, Pretty Boy G. Come on now, you remember that battle now. Let's not be silly. Who was there? Who was there? No one said this yeah? podcast was going to be easy. Who was there? <laughs> Big shout out to man like Dizzy Heights, 
Big shout out to Family Quest. Yeah. My favourite rap crew from back in the Quest. days. Family Quest, my mm. favourite rap crew from back in the days, hands down. Mm. I love Serious the, crew, that. Yep. I loved the, what they talked about. They talked some fun things and jokes, let them on politics. Mm. Wasn't always about the braggadocious or the tough guy this with mm. them. I like their, their topics and subject matter and, mm. and the fun as well as the consciousness of their, their lyrication. Very mature for even back then. Big shout out Dave Cash C, do you get me? Mm. Big shout out to Bionic. Bionic, you know, you know I was rapping even before you, fam. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you was there at the Pretty Boy G battle. I'm just ducking yeah. at these shots, man. I'm ducking at them. Help me. So once again, we're back to culture. Yeah. That's how people dress. And when I say culture, I'm not shying away from black culture, mm. black musical culture. It's that simple, really. Mm -hmm. Not to say that there weren't other people involved in the culture at the time. I'm mm -hmm. not disrespecting Hispanics and all that, because mm -hmm. we classify you as black there too, because, mm -hmm. I mean, white supremacy and racism mm -hmm. is all based that if you're not white and, Still going you know, the same struggles. Sh shades in yeah. between. Do you yeah. get me? It's, it's, it's a bit of a tear system, isn't it? This is not to say oh, really? that, you know what I mean, it shouldn't be a worldly thing mm -hmm. that it has become with hip-hop and bringing the cultures together. There's ne never been nothing like it that's brought so many different cultures together, which is a good thing and a beautiful thing for, you know, gives gives hope to the world, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I always felt like when it comes to breakdancing and graffiti, especially with the technical side of both of them, whether it be wild style or, you know, just some hard power moves, I always felt like it was the kind of thing that other contemporary artists and dancers would envy. They would look at it in awe and say, first of all, how? And if so, how? Where do you begin to dissect Stimulates it? thought. Totally. And, and there's not another movement that does that. Well, this is what I'm saying. I mean, I've got... Um, someone quoted me. Someone said, I, I think it was John Z. D. actually, he said, you said something very profound in one of your old interviews. And this is from 1984. Um, and they asked me about the dance and whatnot. And I said something, I can't remember the exact words, but something like, it should be respected and recognised as much as ballet and jazz and tap like any other dance. And this is 1984. And look at it now. And, you know, we're breaking, going to the Olympics mm. and all those sort of good stuff and yeah, things and all the, all the big things that's going on with the dance and around the dance. Mm. Um, but this wasn't the first time that was going to happen, was it? There was talk of... No, I, yeah, the you're right, you're right. Um, so there was talk of it going to the Olympics in the 80s and it was championed then by New York City Breakers. There you go. Um, and there was talk. I, I, I don't know exactly why it never happened as such, but there was talk of it going like that. And and around those times, it was pretty much like it is now in a way. Mm. Um, the, the the hype and, and big things happening and stuff and things going on. Obviously not on the same scale, mm. but in the same way of the hype and the excitement and mm. the lots going on and things happening with the dance and around the dance. So mm. yeah, it's pretty much like that. And yeah, there was talk of it going to Olympics back then, but didn't quite make it. But here we are. And it's incredible. It's incredible. I mean, again, you know, from Covent, the, the, was it the Cobble King? Oh, oh, yes. Um, and battling Rocksteady, I might add, just for good measure. Oh, you're jumping around stories. You're jumping around Come on, stories. man. I ain't, here to, I ain't messing around. Let's get, to the, <laughs> let's get to the King of the Cobbles. Yeah, come on. Yeah? And why am I the King of the Cobbles? It's the Cobbles, isn't it? That's yeah. Covent, isn't it? It's the yeah. Cobbles. I'm busking. I started off busking. Like, eight, ten shows a day on the cobbles of Covent Garden for a whole summer long. Yeah? You ever look at them cobbles? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> The amount of times, man, come out a master of crack fingers on that. Yeah. No. <laughs> That's some damage there, right? I mean, did that hurt? Like, just on a more... As I said, the amount of times, man, came out master of crack fingers after, after... But the, what's rule number one in showbiz? Smart. The show must go on. Yeah, that's right. What is the performer's prayer? Say it with me. It'll be all right on the night. It'll be all right on the night. It'll be all right on the night. <laughs> but, but there is a real aspect there that comes into determination and the mindset of a b-boy. You know, I think anybody that's true to their art holds that. But when you're face to face with Rocksteady, you've got an audience of people that aren't Covent Garden. I'm not sure what it was. I wasn't there, you understand. But uh, I can't imagine it being such the tourist spot that it is whereby I think probably b-boy and create the foundation that became the busking arena of Covent Garden. And uh, you were bang in the middle of it, face to face with the Rocksteady. That's a lot. Well, 
let me put it into proper context. Yeah. Um, bang in the middle. I think that's a good place to start. <laughs> you could say I was bang in the middle. What am I in the middle of? What am I in the middle of is this hip hop culture coming into Covent Garden. Why Covent Garden? Yeah, why Covent Garden? Why? Do we know? Of course we do. Tell me. I'll tell you. <laughs> Covent Garden has a rich history of street performing, <gasps> going back in time of, a Eng of English culture. Wow. In terms of jugglers, fire eaters, blah, 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 whatever, magicians, whatever, um, Punch and Judy showed, Covent Garden has always been that place. Wow. Yeah? So now... We're getting this culture in and it's street dancing. Why is it street dancing? Because they dance on the street. Why are they dancing mm. on the street? Mm. Because they make money. Mm. Busking. Mm. We call it busking. They call it street hitting. They call it whatever. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Let's just say busking. Mm. Dancing for your dinner. Singing for your supper. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, that has a rich history. So now we know people do this dance, make money, blah, blah, blah. Somehow someone's got wind of this place yeah yeah and they've gone to do the thing there so from before my generation now is my older sidewalk members they've gone there and they're the first to actually be dancing popping actual body popping not robot there was a robot big shout out to dr stew big mm. shout out to duke both yeah, of you in the onesies tight. with the robot gear on the robot's been Touch going you. for ages that's yeah. been going so that was obviously another show how another bus another bus so how old were how sorry sorry to, i just want to keep the lineage so how old were your um your peers in in my peers my sidewalk, sidewalk peers yeah. were all older than me how, by how many years um i think they were like in the like they were around 19, 20, really? maybe 21, and maybe how many, 18. How many in total were in? in so total? Sidewalk, um, Michael Forsyth, okay. Richard Morgan, yeah. a.k.a. Richie Rich. Yes, the Richie Rich. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Salsa House. <Come. laughs> yeah. Um, Dennis Charles. Okay. Um, Sher Ishmael. Right, right. Um, I Ain't said Jeff, Sher's brother. So sick. Michael. Yeah. Dennis, Richie, and Dolby D. So, wow. They were all poppers. Uh, yeah. They were all poppers. Okay. So they had the popping show going. This is different now. Mm. It's more hip-hop, popping, mm. as opposed to robotics. Or now we've got Charlie Chaplin. There's a guy, you can still see him now up, up there at Covent. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. He does the Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. Met him, obviously got to know him. There was some jugglers that I can't remember and stuff. And other performers there. Do you get me? But now this hip hop thing is coming and this 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 popping and stuff, and now this breaking thing taking over. Yeah, it's like it's drawing in big crowds. It's making good money. Wow! Killer, the magical sum of eighty three. I'm going home every day after a, a hard day's work. Tell me. <laughs> yeah. Tell me. After a hard day's work, I've got the front pocket. Both front pockets and both pack pockets, and they're all full of change. I'm walking like Robocop, and I'm going chink, chink, <laughs> chink as I'm walking. Yeah? Wow, the dream, man. These are the days of half pennies and pound notes and blue fivers. Blue fivers, huh? The blue yeah. Every day. From there, we asked to be on TV, breakfast TV. Breakfast TV just launched then. Was it TVAM or some other? TVAM, yeah. exactly, TVAM. Which is a bit, uh, ITV3 thing, right? That's right. IT, well, not ITV, not on the ITV3. There's only one ITV then. Oh, yeah, true. It's yeah, what one. am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! <laughs> it's only one ITV. Oh, apologies. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. We've gone and done that. Yo. The culture's got bigger now because a lot of people have told me that, yes, they liked it and they was into it, so this is like a year on from now, say, the Buffalo Girls. Mm -hmm. Two years on from Jeffrey Daniels being on top of the pops and doing the backslide mm -hmm, and, uh -huh. and so, stuff like that. So it's really developed at this point. Yeah. yeah, but now they've seen English people on English TV doing it. So it set the nation off like, yeah, Fire. I'm on this thing too. Yeah. But then there were people like Broken Glass up in Manchester that were well, also... Actually, I'm glad you mentioned them, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, yeah. I always want to give a, I always want to give a big shout out to Broken Glass because to me, in the beginning days, first two biggest crews in the country, in the UK, was Sidewalk and Broken Glass. Mm. Yeah, as in doing things 
out there mm. and actually really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everyone was dancing, but they were really good. <laughs> <Tough>. <laughs> yeah, they're, mm. they're proper legends and I always want to give a big salute out to them mm. because I actually had a little tay to tay with them. Because this is that B-boy life. You see a man break on your floor and not test him and see what How he's got dare and you. What, he's, what he's about. <laughs> Come on now, what do you think this is? <laughs> yeah, this ain't no competition, fam. <laughs> Let's see what you got. <laughs> what do you mean, cypher? <laughs> this is a battle, fam. Rock till you drop. <laughs> yeah? So, I see these mans in my manor, in the SE, in Deptford, at the Albany Empire. Yeah? That was a legendary venue back then. Yo. Yeah? yeah, but that's my manner. That's where man got walk every day and go to school. At reach. And you're here doing that? There's about mm. six, seven men in the dance. Yeah. So one man throws down. I said, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have some of that. A next man comes out. He throws down. I'm like, okay. Have some of that. Next one comes out. He does some shit. I'm like, yeah. Have some of that. <laughs> <laughs> then another one comes out and he does some madness. This one flipped me on my head. Bro, one guy from Broken Glass. Sorry, I, I, I don't know your name, bro. I forget your name. But he did flares back then. Oh. He did flares back then. He did it into a windmill and back into a flare. Mm. Okay. It was very gymnastic y. Mm. Yeah, to me, there's a, a gymnast way of breaking and a mm. b boy way of breaking, even if you do flares you. or whatever. It's all about neither here nor there. Yeah, it's, yeah? it's, it's all in but, the this is 1983. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what he's time. done. It's like, yo, that was sick hole. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen it on the gymnastic thing, but he's mm-hmm. dropped it, that B-boy way. Mm. And, and there is a way. It's a particular flavour with the rhythms. And the, yeah, I get you. And he's dropped it. And I'm like, rah! Mm. Who are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> you want a cup like, of tea? Man, you, welcome you, to man. the neighbourhood. They was like, they was like, oh, Broken glass uh, from Manchester. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm doing a fucked up accent. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I goes, oh, you guys, uh, he goes, oh, I'm dope. He goes, yeah, we know who you are. Blah. They already knew who I was. Yeah, you get me? Yeah, come on. You're done, no. It's Talk London town. But, but respect was all due and respect was all given. Do you mm-hmm. get me? Benji Reed came out with the popping. But I've got five poppers and me, Breaker. They're like more breakers mm-hmm. and one or two poppers. Do you see what I mean? That yeah. was the thing with Sidewalk with me. Yeah. I was the only breaker. And to me, it was my duty to defend, let alone to seek and destroy. Mm. That's no disrespect and that's no bigging up myself. To me, that's the B-boy game. You're the striker of the team. You yeah. Gotta, you got to, you know what I mean? You've got to shoot, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. And big up everybody. If it's, if it's, it's London All-Stars and we're going on Arsenal... Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll take the Thierry Henry. <laughs> <laughs> He's currently holding his mouth right now in, in jest. Um, uh, just to re- reverse engineer a little bit the conversation, uh, there, there obviously was Micron that, that, that you kind of... Well, Micron, yes, give respect out to Micron. Once again, another South East London crew. That I actually almost was in. Yeah, that's what I, I'm yeah, meant to believe. I was almost yes. in because I'd met one of them at a Saxon outdoor thing hmm. for the kids, I think, yeah, like a little Saxon. summer. Saxon, Saxon sound, sound system, on. SE, Dunno, Broccoli, Massive. Yeah? Saxon sound, man. Wow. Okay. Big shout out to Cyber Sound System as well. You're done, though. Sticksy addict. B.I. Posse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you were dropping them in. Right. So, um, so you nearly were. So there was an outdoor jam. I'd just started breaking. I hadn't been breaking a year. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Man's just, but man's on the thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every day I'm on this thing. Banging up myself, blah, blah. A few times I could have died. Do you know what I mean? Went for a head spin. <laughs> I'm lying on the floor like, uh, oh, yeah. you know, you, my, my sister walks in like, What's the matter with you? I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> There's worse things you could be doing in a teen. There's a teen in your bedroom. Bang, me. bang, 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 bang. Stop the banging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, I had to learn to be smoothy smooth, innit? Yeah. Anyway, I'm testing out my things now. Bit whatever. Got a popping going on. I see a guy, he's popping. He looks pretty good. Blah, blah, blah. I'm doing the popping, but I don't think I'm good or anything. Do you get me? And I'm on this breaking thing. I don't think I'm good. I'm just trying. I know mm. everyone's trying. Do you get me? Figured but I'm it trying. Out as you go, yeah. But I know I'm trying with the with the foresight of I want to be legendary. Mm. I want to be one of the mans in this thing because this is the start of it. Yeah, and 
there's going to come a time when you're not going to do it no more. It's a physical activity mm. that only has a certain lifespan, no matter what sport or physical activity you mm. do. Yeah, you can still do it, but you won't be up your uh, you won't be at your optimum, optimum prime. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Optimum prime is a certain time. Mm. Do you get me? Um, but I just want to be known. When it first, when they opened the book, the history books, it will say, in the beginning, there was the Dolby. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't mean the sound system, man. Yeah, the original king of London town. Not that I was the first. I was the first maybe to be on TV. Mm. I was the first to maybe do certain things. But I wasn't the first to start it. I didn't have a jump start on anyone, mm. I don't think, in particular in terms of breaking, maybe the culture and the mm. music and stuff, but not breaking. I saw it like everyone else, Buffalo Girls. Yeah, yeah. And then a few little clips of other stuff came out here and there shortly after. Mm. Flash dance, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Just go back to Micron. So Yeah, sorry, yeah, Micron. Yeah. I'm at the I'm at the thing, blah, blah, people are popping now, mm. they're playing a bit of um this new electro music with people. I think it's some E. T. Boogie then. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> um, and some stuff and anyway I braked and I flipped them out really because obviously people had seen the thing the Buffalo Girls and because mm. it's obviously played a few times on top of the pops yeah, yeah. back then um, but I was doing it and so he's coming to me he's like oh you're good and blah I goes oh you're good blah we get to talking he starts talking about oh there's this magical place where you can go to dance and make money from dancing I'm like, oh, all right. I wasn't interested in that though I, you know, I'd never heard of the name, mm. but I'd heard about this magical place. Mm. And that wasn't what I was about. To me, it was just about trying to be good. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about even a crew or nothing. It was just about trying to be really good at it. Sometimes and... people can get too far forward in themselves in becoming a member of a crew or something. I often felt, I often feel that way, that you kind of got to cut your chops. You've got to know yourself before you go into the arena of representing something. Indeed, sir. That is a very important lesson in life, kids. One must know thyself. Mm. Yes? Know I mean, thyself. It's that's this. This is part. That's part of getting to know yourself. To actually do, yeah, and put yourself in it. It's not everything you're going to be good at straight away. Yeah. It, but if you persevere and you really want it, you can get it. It just may take you longer. But if you want it, you can still mm. get it. Other stuff you may find more easier to do mm. at first, like breaking, learning breaking. Some people may find footwork really hard, mm. but they'll find a backspin and a windmill easier. Yeah, isn't that the way? And in the opposite way. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? And some people find everything hard. Yeah. And then some people... Excel. ...will find everything easy. Yeah. It's just that simple. Some people are just more naturally flexible than others and so on. Is that on. what it is, you think? You think, because obviously there are these anomalies that are just like the prince of fucking breakdancing or graffiti or emceeing, and then there's others that, you know, they, they almost have a signature move. Oh, indeed. I think for anyone you're going to get your signature move. Even if you're whack and you only got one move, that's going to be your signature move, mm. isn't it? <laughs> Pull him out, bring him out. We need, we need backup. But, <laughs> but even as a dope b-boy of dope, lots of dope shit, you'll have signature stuff. Yeah. You'll have a signature way of moving, period. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, question though, that's, that's question not though. that important, really. It's not that important. And, and I think the reason why I lean towards it is because with... With beatboxing, it's ever progressive. And sometimes there's this crossroad that I have in my head. I'm like, well, do I follow the trend? And um, do it, does, will that enhance my style? Or will that, um, will that, uh, what's the word? Uh, will it, um, would it, will it take away from my style? Will it prohibit me? Will it stop me from being individual? And I think that plays a lot in, in b-boying as well. Like there's a lot of, the whole power move thing was just, it was such a big thing because it was a crowd pleaser. It was all obviously like a heavy, heavy toll on the body and a lot of people were getting it right. There must have been, there must be compromises within b-boys where they just have to look at themselves and say, yeah, am I compromised by just going down a direction of style like that? Well, I think, like you said, with b-boy or beatboxing or whatever you choose to do to try to become, you go on a quest to be try to become good at, mm. with, you know, the, the quest of trying to become good at it, mm. you will ponder what's come before you. You will ponder what's going on now. Mm. And you will ponder what could be and what will be. Mm. And this is all about trying to find your own style. Yeah. Yeah? 
and that is and that's ultimately what you're on the quest for isn't it to mm. find your own thing and your own style and your own individuality and what you do mm. to stand out amongst the rest mm. if not to stand up stand above the rest yeah. even do you see what i mean it's true but with your own thing yeah or even if you are inspired by something old something new something borrowed something blue mm. even if you are but you flip it so crazy or you show the true deep complexities of it that people have not really seen before. Mm. That's still uh, uh, something worthy of achievement. It's true. You see it? what I mean? So that's your style. Because you never know what the thing that you're contributing to. For you, it might just be a, you know, a regular day at the office, but to a culture or a scene or a person that you're competing with, that to, that to an audience is, wow, never thought of that before. There's so many angles, and that's the thing, and the styles, and it's it's finding yourself and getting to know yourself, mm. that you're comfortable. Like, you know what? This is me, and this is how I do it. Mm. So that's that bedroom, me, that, and this that, is how I do it. So that bedroom time where you were nearly breaking your neck, it actually holds dividends because you, you, help, you honed your craft. Hone my craft, but sticking on topic, got to know myself. <laughs> I'm saying Know That's, thyself Know thyself Before thou thinks They knowest thee mm. Yeah <laughs> And you thought This was going to be a, a light floaty podcast Did you? <laughs> really? <laughs> Those that know Dolby D Know that you are um, You do not Mince your words You tell it like it is uh, What you said there About broken glass I think is extremely honourable And the fact that you You were uh, You know Salute Um Com- 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 competition like that is, is awesome. I mean, it wasn't just um, it wasn't just the south where you started rocking. There was other areas. I get the impression, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I wasn't there. You understand? But was it that Friday was electric, <laughs> Saturday <laughs> was Lyceum, and Sunday was Kiss? Yeah. Yes. Like yep. these are all club places where okay. our kid used to absolutely throw down. <laughs> yes, Kells. No editing needed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that one, isn't I it? love yeah. that one. No, that's the life. That was the life. Listen, it was Electric Ball on Friday. Mm. And Electric Ball on was the dance club. At the time, it was the dance. If you was a mm. dancer, that was the club. Mm-hmm. And that had the darkest jazz room. Yeah, Ooh. there was other clubs like Cat Whiskers and... And other stuff that I that came before me. That's not my thing. That's not my time. But I've heard of legends before me. Wow. Do you see what I'm saying? Yo. This was already a legendary thing. And Lecture was already legendary. Lyceum Camden, was already Camden legendary. Lyceum yeah. was more legendary for the girls, though. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Kisses was legendary as well. Do mm. you get me? Mm. But Lecture Bourne was the dance club. <sighs> and that's where I made my name. Yeah. When I first stepped on the scene, it was messy. Yeah. I stepped on it like a don. That's why I call myself the Mercadon. Mm. Why am I a Mercadon? It all happened one day when I murked a Don. So there I am. I'm an electric ballroom. How I got in there, that's another story. <laughs> we don't need to go there right now. Let's keep, let's keep it focused. Come on, below. Yeah? I'm an electric ballroom. I've not done nothing out in public since that Saxon thing, which wasn't too long ago. Mm. Do you get me? Mm. I've not been breaking a year. Mm. It's not been a year yet. Mm. So anyway, this club now, it wasn't a hip-hop club. It wasn't really hip-hop, hip-hop clubs then. It was more punky, wasn't it, Camden? No, this, yeah. it's, this was either, back in the days, there's a black guy, mm. he was either a soul head or a reggae man. I see, yeah. Uh, yeah? There was yeah. nothing else really. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had your black punk rocker yeah, yeah, or yeah. teddy boy yeah, yeah, yeah. or mod or whatever, but really, mm. a reggae man or a soul head. Yeah? Sometimes the two worlds blended here and there. But yeah, man. Now this new thing is coming in, this hip hop, funky up ting and electronic and rap ting. All that's coming in. This this new thing is coming in now. You see what I'm saying? Revolutionary. Yeah. So at the club, you play soul and funk and boogie. And then you'd have like an hour electro here and there. Big shout out to George Power, who used to play it. And Paul Anderson yeah, man. was his box boy Long at the time. time. Legends. Yeah, man, legends. Yeah, that's some lineage mm, there. Yeah, I noticed the, I noticed. Paul this. Anderson was George Powell's box boy that's there, mad. learning the trade and showing the ropes. You get me? Mm. Yeah? So I see Paul Anderson when he was box boy and to see him actually play in the electric ballroom. Anyway, big shout out to George Powell for letting wow. me in. Mm. But anyway, the dance floor has changed because Electro has come on now. So mm. the, 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 the demographics of the dance floor change. There's not so many girl and man dancing together now. Mm. 
and the robots have come out. <laughs> yeah. and the robots of, have come out. And we ain't yeah. talking no John Terry business here. We're talking proper... <laughs> <laughs> Lots of robots going everywhere. Lots of little circles popping off. Yeah. Looking at circle. You gravitate to the biggest circle. As I gravitate to the biggest circle... I'm with my mans from school who's been watching me do it. No one else wants to do it with me around and they think I'm a madman mm -mm. doing what I'm doing, rolling around the floor and all that stuff. Yeah. Like, am I going to do it? Mm. I'm, like, I'm just going to jump on the floor in front of girls. Do you know what I mean? Like, if someone does it, I'll do it. If someone does it, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not just going to jump on the floor in front of mm -hmm. girls. Yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let alone, I don't think I'm good anyway. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to learn the thing. I don't know. Do you get me? Because yeah, 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 yeah. it's not something you can look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah, break. yeah, it's you not the one, is it? You yeah, have to true. feel it. You yeah, can't yeah. be looking in the mirror you like a pretty boy. Doesn't work, man. It's style. You've got to be doing it. You've got to be in it for you got to yeah. feel it. Yeah. you got to know yourself. So anyway, there's a battle going on between two guys and they're popping. Then one's gone down, done a bit of breaking. Then the other one's gone down, did a bit of breaking. All right. Circle's big, getting bigger. Then the other guy's gone down and done something. And the other guy was like, whoa. Mm. Yeah, like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, whoa. And there was a bit of a pause. <laughs> so now I've shot in, they're like, wee, I have some of that. They both look like, raw. Yeah. And I know I killed them because to me, what I saw wasn't that good. And yeah, you, you no were, disrespect. No, you'd already sized it up in your head. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. yeah? I already tested the waters. Mm. Yeah. I've seen, I've mm. seen. But have some of that. So then one guy who had stopped the other guy, yeah, not the one who couldn't go again, but the other one, he's come out and he's done something. And I'm like, yo, is that it? Ah, some of that, ah, dick freeze. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, bro. Search like Google that shit, the dick freeze, all right? So they're like, oh, like the crowd started to really get busy mm. now to the point where they've pushed me out the way, some little kid out the way to see what's going on in the oh, circle. Shit. So I've come out like, yo, and I'm with my man from school. And he's like, I'm like to him, yo, what it look like? What it look like? Because mm -hmm. before I used to show him and he'd be like, no, nah, it doesn't look like that. So I had the video and I'd be like, look at this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at me. Oh, that is what does so it look cool. like? Yeah, that's so cool. And he'd be like, mm, Oh man, uh. that is the coolest story. Even but I'd just be like. That's a nugget. I got to try harder. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like, oh no, I'm whack. Mm -hmm. And I probably was whack, mm -hmm. but I got to try harder. Yeah, yeah. That's it, really. Yeah. Anyway, I've done it. I've said, what does it look like? What do you look like? He's like, oh, I look wicked, it look wicked. I go, what? I go, like, like, like the video. Like, he's like, yeah, yeah. I was like, yes. Oh my God, that's the coolest <laughs> shit. So now I'm sitting in the club and that, and um, it switched. The music switched again mm. to funk, soul, whatever, blah, mm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Bit chilling out. Look, go up to the jazz room. The jazz room is crazy. Really? This was the legendary thing. This is another UK thing that needs to be shouted out. The, the UK jazz dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fusion The as music, well. jazz yeah, fusion, fusion, the music yeah. and the dance. The it, scat, it had its whole everything. culture. And back mm. then, that was like the break dancing of yeah, dance. Those were right. the real big, big legends of dance. Yeah, they were mm. soul and boogie legends as well. But the jazz dancing was the, the the highest level. I saw documentaries on that. It's That's so how it, it felt to me. Yeah, and very re re relatable as well. Yeah, yeah. So I was already the dance culture was already something, mm. but this new thing is coming in, and I'm ground zero with mm. it. So that was local. I'm not known. I'm nothing. Do you get me? Mm. I've come to the place now, Electric Ballroom. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. He says it looked good. I'm sitting down at it. Now, switch back now. Mm. George Powell's back on. He starts playing some electro, blah, blah, blah. My man's are going, you're going to do it again? He goes, yeah, 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 I will. Yeah, in a minute, in a minute. Let me, so let, me, cool. let me get my mind right, yeah? Mm. You've got to get your mind right, yeah? <laughs> get your mind right. Yeah. So I'm like... In the zone. As I'm trying to get my mind right, George Powell's got on the mic and he's gone... Hey, well, the guy who was doing the break dance in that, would he come out and do it again for us? Yo. I looked to my man's. The crowd's gone, yeah. Wow. So I'm like, he goes, you can come on. He goes, all right, all right, I definitely, I need some time to get my mind right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 so yeah. as he's gone, he goes, oh, if you come out, he goes, um, he goes, oh, we'd really like you to come out, blah, blah, blah. If you come out, we'll give you five pound. Remember, these are the yeah, days of blue five pound notes. Blue backs. Pound notes. And half pennies. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> this is 1983. Mm. So I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm coming, coming now. As I'm coming now, I've got about good eight men around me. And they're all older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? yeah. So I'm parting through the crowd. And now the, 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 the actual dance floor is starting to pack out now. Because right. people want to see yeah, 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 yeah. what he's talking about. Yeah. Because everyone didn't see. Yeah. She must have got real for a hot second there. Because you're getting paid for it now. As I'm coming out, he's gone, all right, if you come out, because he didn't think I was coming out, he mm. hadn't seen me now, mm. we'll give you £20. So as I'm already coming, we're coming, yeah? I'm then the crowd's around. gone, because back in the days, the crowd used to be rowdy. If this tune was really good, mm. like, like more in the reggae, yeah, in the soul sometimes, more in the reggae, they'd thing called Lick Wood. Like this tune was really hot. You'd lick wood and you just bang, like bang on the wall, bang anything wood, you just bang. Oh, that's that's the yeah. shit. I know what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And just bang up the place. It's yeah. totally become the culture too, like even with hip hop into into like the more garage music as well. It was kind of the thing, wasn't it? There's lots of things come from reggae mm. that people don't really associate, understand, yeah. or give, or understand, or even know. Like for instance, mm. the whole jump, jump, jump. That was a reggae thing from yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. And the, wheel, and the wheeling up of things. Yeah, the, the wheel, the mix, everything. so many things. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. As I'm coming out now, they go, no, give him more, give him more. The crowd's getting rowdy and making up noise. So he says, all right. And now I'm in the middle of the floor now, coming out like a boxer with people around me like that, and I'm coming through like this. He goes, all right, we'll give you 50 pound. Wow. 50 pound. We're in the middle of the floor. My man's like, he's here, he's here. We go to the side of the stage or whatever. He's come down. And there was no room to do anything on the stage. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. it's all full of equipment yeah, yeah. and DJ, whatever. Yeah. So he's gone, ah, I'm going to do it first then or whatever. I go, as you said, you said 50 pound. Hmm. He's gone, all right. He's pulled out 15. 15. Oh, cheeky. I guess you said 50. Yeah. He's gone, oh, what, you're going to hold me to that? And I'm like, yeah. He's it's looked... basic mathematics, man. He's looked down the stairs and it's like... A squad of eight people. Eight man. Really? <laughs> just by the stairs, like that. Yeah? Really? And he's just looked like... On a real... He's dug back in his pocket. Yeah. He's gone, okay. i got 45. Would you do it for that? And I've gone, yes, I will. Thank you. Oh, that is... Oh. <laughs> Hold up. Yeah. So now, I'm like, all right, I've got to do this thing, innit? So as I'm taking my stuff out of my pocket to give to my mans, mm. so it don't go flying everywhere when I'm doing my thing, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm looked, like, out of the crowd, and it's like the whole dance floor's packed, and they're all looking at me. I look upstairs to the jazz room, which is on the corner, mm. and there's glass there. So people can see down. Oh my god! They're There's watching. people on top of people like that. Oh shit! And it's proper sent chills down my spine. Yeah, yeah. Like yo. So now I've come through the door. And I have to go, come on the dance floor. Now I've got to part through the people, and I'm like. So there's people like surrounding me like mm -hmm. this close type thing. I'm like, you got to move back to Tyson me. Tyson in the ring. You got to move back. Yeah. You know, to give me room. Blah, blah. The more you move back, and people move back, and I started doing my thing. And then the same guy that I had the battle with, yeah, because I'm counting that as a battle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> he came in a couple of times to give me a rest because after every throwdown, it's like you're proper exhausted, you're proper mm -hmm. spent. So I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> I'm pouring sweat, like, <laughs> right? ladies, fall back. Yeah, I'm just going to sort myself out. Shit. And, um, Ew. And, you know, have a bit of breather. And I go back in, but I'll do what I can. I didn't have too much then. But like I said, I'm watching mainly the Rocksteady crew in the mm. Buffalo Girls video. And, they, and Rocksteady crew came on something else as well. Um, a show called Entertainment USA back then, where this guy, Jonathan Ross, Jonathan King, a presenter, mm. used mm. to go to America and show you what's happening and what's cool. Mm. Well, hip hop and break dancing was cool, but he had the Rocksteady on. It was some great... I saw this. Yeah, I've seen it on YouTube. Of, great yeah, yeah, bit yeah. of classic footage yeah, that was one of my learning tools. Because mm. well, all you could do is watch, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Slow down, rewind and all that. So all you could do is watch around then. Yeah. So 
Um, yeah. So I did it, and you know, I did my few moves mm. or whatever. Sometimes repeated, exhaust myself. Mm. Thank you. Blah blah blah. Oh, good. Now everyone's like, ah, yeah, like, ah, yeah. oh, you from America? Ah. Some people thought I was the guy from the Buffalo Gals video and Entertainment USA, who's in the Rock Steady crew, his name's Normski. Wow. And he's a Puerto Rican guy, and he's got an afro, and he's wearing a headband mm. and that. And I think I used to walk, walk one too, because I saw him wear it. People were wearing headbands and all that then, yeah. the Elise headbands mm. and, and that sort of stuff, and the feeler and that. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they thought I was him, they thought I was American, because I was doing this thing and people mm. hadn't really seen it live in the flesh. Because breaking, it is, I know what it's like. It was like that for me. I mean, seeing it, on TV, it's like, wow, wow, mm -hmm. how is he spinning like that? It's, it's, ama it's an amazing thing. But it's even more amazing when you see it, like, live and direct. Oh, flesh, yeah, totally. Yeah, it's, it is really... It's a human interest. It, for, like you say, people up top in the jazz room watching, and, uh, you know, I can only hold my hat as close as I can to the flame that you're talking about with the, with the beatboxing. There was a zeitgeist moment where people are like, what, the, what are you doing? What was this? It's, it's like a magic trick. It, no, it's bigger than a magic trick. It's, it's, such it's a, like that. Yeah. I call it... The hood superhero. Yeah, you go. Da, 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 da. There's this guy around my way. Yeah. He can spin on his head. Yeah, he can yeah, do this. Yeah, he can true. do. Nah, yeah. no way. Yo, I'll show you. I'll take you to him. Then when you see it, you're like, wow. wow. He was right. And that's the biggest bit of viral. You know, that's the actually that's the key viral message. If you want to get successful, uh, have that hype. Do something that's completely unthinkable. You got to. You got to get to know yourself. Yeah. Back when you get to know yourself, yourself that's when you yeah. you find those things. Mm. Yeah, you have to go on that quest for those things by searching deep into yourself. I know it sounds all mystical and kung fu and whatnot, mm. but it is that type of thing. Do you know what I mean? It's that simple. You don't know what you can do or what you're capable. You don't know what feels good to you. And when you find yourself, you know what feels good to you and you feel right doing mm. what you're doing because a move is a move is a move is a move. Mm. It's not about moves. It's about movement. Mm. And this is something I teach with regards to the dance. It's about movement, not about moves. You can acquire moves and you acquire moves and there's always going to be moves and you acquire loads of moves and you flip mm -hmm. them. It's always moves. But now how are you going to present that? How are you going to choreograph that into mm. one big load of deliciousness? <laughs> The template you've got, yeah. create, you've got to create a, a succession, a sequence that that allows for, like a, I guess a lead guitarist would, you know, use certain notes within to crescendo, or, or a, you know a, 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 a gymnast, which is going to be a little bit more crass, but certainly with a beatbox, it's like you have this template, and as long as you have the, as long as you, you don't necessarily need to throw every single combination into the one. Well, you know, you over, you, you overpower yourself. You've got to be smart haven't you and go with a journey composition yeah yeah composition ccc click clack connection carefully <laughs> composed compositions yeah yeah um it is it's about how you're going to present it so a move is a move you can be inspired mm. yeah oh shit he did um backflip back head flip oh damn that's dope do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can do a backflip into a head spin. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, well, uh, or sure. whatever. Yeah. And so on. But either way, or you did a back, someone else does a backflip into head spin, but he spun more than you mm -hmm. into something else. And it goes on and on and on. It's the never ending journey, really and truly. Like but, something but like Kung Fu, something like breaking, yeah, was, something yeah. like beatboxing, yeah. and these, these arts. They're never-ending journeys. Mm. I don't think it's about a, a start and an end. It's about finding yourself mm. in in that world and finding yourself. When I say find yourself and you actually find yourself, yeah, part of it is trying to find yourself. That's a beautiful journey. Mm. That journey of finding yourself and what you're good at, what you can, what you can't do, what you need to work on, da 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 da, da. All that maddening stuff that constantly you 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 obsess about as an artist yeah. when you're creating something, mm. that's all that's all um, part of the process. The discipline. But when you actually crazy. get now to find yourself, ah, oh, there I am, and then you become comfortable with yourself, like yeah, well, this is who I am mm. in this world. 
Now, that's a different journey. Tyson, in his documentary, said uh, a, a good boxer is a ha happy boxer. Would that be right in saying the same with b-boying? Like, if you're happy and at your peak and you can walk into any room just knowing that you could lick it, like, is that, is that, is that the kind of mindset you want to be in? Well, that's a great feeling. Having that feeling is a great feeling. But, of course, being happy is good for anything. Yeah, it's true. And for anybody, really. But if you're happy in your life. But I tell you what. From an aggression point of I view, I tell you though, what. Do you know what I'm from saying? an aggressive point of view, from a feeling down about yourself point of view, and all those other negative things about yourself, about yourself. Mm. Yeah. It's that's where that happiness can be found mm. in those creative pursuits. That's right. So as unhappy as you are, say as a boxer. You go in a gym and you have a good workout. Serotonin levels come up. You're, you're in. You're totally chilled yeah. up. I was having certain issues around that time in school and stuff, family, mm -hmm. blah, 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 which we don't really need to get into. Mm -hmm. We all have them. Do you mm -hmm. get me? Um, but I find as angry as I was, as frustrated as I was, and fed up, depressed or whatever, a lot of anger then really, mm. I take it out on myself by trying to get these moves, by banging up myself. And then when you get that feeling of it doesn't hurt no more because they don't look like it hurts mm -hmm. on the, when they do it. It mm -hmm. can't hurt. And if it hurts, I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. It must be something I'm doing. That was part of the fun, working it out. Not even about being taught, working it out. That's part of the fun. Everyone's trying to work it out. That's interesting. Why is it hurt? That's a really yeah. interesting way of looking at it. I can't be doing it right if it hurts. Yeah. They don't look like it hurts. And if this it hurts all the time, what the f what is that? Yo, that's so deep you said that. That's so interesting. So I learned to work, you learn to work, that's part of the fun, working mm. it out. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So the dance floor changes again. People are coming up to me buying drinks. I'm with all the mans them like a don at the table. People are buying me drinks, like, what do you want? Dropping me. Blah, blah. I'm like, oh, I don't drink. I was cutting my man's like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, rum and coke, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Drinks lined up. Oh, where are you from? A man? They say, what's your name? I've gone in there like, people are like, what's your name? What's your name? This is when it starts. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't even figured out the name yet. I'm Dol B D. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know the tune. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look it up. I'm Dolby D, written by Dolby D, produced by Dolby D, starring Dolby D. Yeah. <laughs> Dolby fucking D, all right? So there goes, oh, is that, that's not your real name. It's Dolby D. Mm. As far as I'm concerned, it's Dolby D. Yeah. So I'm telling everyone my name is Dolby D when they're asking me. Yeah? And it's gone. <laughs> and it's gone clear. Here's the thing, though. Ah, it's not finished. This, uh, it's all what very happens in a short space of time. But... Dance will change again. Boogie, mm. it's getting mm. less now because, you know... People have scored, people mm. have left. Da -da 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 -da. It's getting late, yeah. But I'm in for the duration. It's my first time up West End, up in a big club. Boom, boom, boom. It's proper like that to me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah I'm, I've just turned 15. Mm. Do you get me? Yo, and you can't just walk into a club at 15. I, there Yo. was Exactly. You can't just walk in a club. If I tell you how I got in the club. This is a key to the city shit. If I told you how I got in the club, how I got in the club is I went up there with like 10, 15 men. Yeah. And they're all older. Get they're in. like 18 plus. Yeah. And with my man who looks older and he's got into clubs before mm. and he's one of the ones I heard the fables and the stories and the legends from, right. do you get me? Um, and I said, I'll just come up there because they go, oh, we're going to get you in, we're going to get you in. I'm like, oh, if whatever, do you know what I mean? Like, mm. I, I look younger than I am anyway, do you know what I mean? I look probably mm -hmm. maybe 13, 12, yeah, yeah, even yeah. though I'm 15. This baby face just doesn't yeah. age, boy. <laughs> oh, you know, age, man. So I'm like, I'll just come up. I've never been at West End. It's the first day of summer holidays. Mm. It's the first day of summer holidays. We broke up this Friday. Mm. We're chilling that afternoon. We go electrics that eve, that night. Yeah? It's a whole summer ahead. So now, dance floor's flipped again. There's not as many people. Now they're playing the electro again. I see a guy popping. I thought he was really nice. I went up to him. He says, oh, wow, you're really good. You're really cool, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, you're really cool. I was like, oh, thanks. He goes, oh, I saw you out there. But I goes, oh, he goes, where are you from? America, I goes, no, I'm from South London. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all oh, right. He goes, ah. He goes, we're from South London too. I got, uh, I got, we got a crew in that. We dance and that. And it's like, yeah. I was like, okay, right. Let me introduce you to him. 
So he's introduced me now to Michael Forsyth, Jeff Ishmael. Um, big shout out to Andy. I mean, uh, yeah, Andy, he used to hang around, but he didn't become part of the crew. Richie, um, um, Sher and that, we've mm. met. And they says, ah, oh, we make money off dancing. You should come with us. So the very next day, I'm at Covent Garden. Mad, yeah, yeah. And I'm seeing the floor, like, on the cobbles. <laughs> They're like, Mad. yeah. And I'm like, oh, i got to learn. i got to do it. i got to adapt. Do you know what I mean? There's certain things you can't do, but there's certain things I'm going to have to do and adapt and become yeah. better at. But it's through the shows and so many shows every day mm -hmm. now. I'm, I'm hardly getting a chance to practice, really. No, no, no. I'm just doing shows yeah. all the time. And well, that's that how it your was. Training ground. That becomes your training ground. And, and then I've seen Micron there. I didn't see him after a few shows, but I see Mike on there and Sidewalker walking that way mm. and they're walking this way. And I didn't know they were Mike on crew. Mm. I just knew that guy had a name in the SE, yeah. Howard. And then who was with them? The guy from the night before. Right. Who was Diamond Headed yeah. Dennis. Yeah. I didn't know then, but I got to know that's his mm. name. Diamond Headed Dennis. Yeah. Dion, big time skanker as well. Big shout out to the regular men's gankers. Yeah. Skanking was another big dance at it was the time. A big dance back then, that yeah. kind of died down as well, but it was another big dance. And we did it different. English people did it different mm -hmm. from Jamaicans. Do you mm -hmm. get me? It was a more wilder dance. And it was a, once again, it was a battle dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was people going in, showing improve. No, mm. no animosity and stuff. People showing in improve and 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 dominance and, and stuff. And just just expressing their blackness. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. to the, and, and, and the dubs, and mm -hmm. you get me? It was some spiritual thing for real. Mm -hmm. You get me? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a lot of skill and style behind it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Um, so I'm used to that. You're used to that show. You're used to a circle. You're used to the music and that vibe. So it's the same thing, but it's just this American vibe, mm. and I like this American vibe. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just a different take on things. I like the, I like the reggae thing too. I like chatting. Mm -hmm. I like that forms of music. Mm -hmm. I don't like all reggae, mm -hmm. but I like chatting and mm -hmm. good lyrics. Just like I like lyrics mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. rapping. I like lyrics with with grime and and, yeah. and and trap or whatever. I like that sort of genre within music. Mm -hmm. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, totally. What is jungle really? It's yeah. a derivative of house music. That's right. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. same like Hardcore drum house. and bass. Da, 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 da. Mm. So there's the roots of house music. Reggae, lovers rock, um, um, sound, mm. boy business, Bob Marley. It's reggae. Hip hop, it's James Brown, soul, funk. We can't discredit the two-tone as well. You know? Soul, funk, two-tone, that's yeah. another genre. Soul, funk, and it's, but the hip hop is a derivative of that. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? And it's those derivatives mm -hmm. that I like when mm -hmm. it comes to the lyrics and the bass and the beats. Mm -hmm. That's what I like. But obviously mm -hmm. I'm totally hip-hop and committed to hip-hop, mm -hmm. but I do like a bit of ragga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this new grime stuff and all that, shit's off the train, do you get me? Yeah. That man's got some rhymes. Can I ask you about um, London All-Stars? Uh, because that really became a, a, a tour de force. Like... I mean, now we're talking in areas where I was most definitely alive and kicking and, you know, Blue Peter um, and a couple of other TV shows that of, of its time that really echoed uh, an intention of, you know, this was a thing. Like you, you were becoming, you know, predominant and becoming really successful for, the in, for a lot of people's introduction to breakdancing, you know what I mean? Well, as I said, to me, one of the things about breaking was I think it didn't put hip hop on the map but it solidified it on the map mm. and made it more accessible to the younger generations mm. that have grown now into it and so on um, really put it on the map so it had a very big profile then mm. so as I said there was talks of us um, making a record Broken Glass made a record mm -hmm. back then they mm -hmm. had their manager was a big DJ from one of the big clubs in Manchester at the time. I forget his name. I don't know if it was Jonathan, mm. something like that. They made a record. There was talks of us making a record as well. And that was with um, Paul Oakenfold was our manager. Wow. Paul, Paul Oakenfold, Oakenfold yeah. was sidewalk manager. Wow. And then he was also London All-Stars manager. Wow. Early doors in the game. This is when he worked for a um, record distribution company 
called um, Rush Release. Yes. And then they Rings. did Champion Records as well. Yeah. And brought Jazzy, Jeff and the Fresh Prince over and did some other stuff. We released some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We used to get stuff like Art and Noise on White Label. Mad. Yeah. Yeah. Free. <laughs> Dropping that shit too casually on my floor, <laughs> boy. <laughs> yeah, Cold. stuff like that. Yeah. Always. Used to get also. I'd met Jelly Bean Benitez back then. This is just as he was coming out with the Madonna stuff. Mad. Me, Paul Alcafold, Jelly Bean Benitez at Groove Records one day. Not a normal meet. That just doesn't... That's Just incredible. chilling. Yeah. Too much for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Oh, and there was lots of commercials and mm. lots of shows. Lots and lots of Mastermind. shows. Mastermind. Lots of shows. M Mastermind, the flyers, ring your whole type, b-boy documents, posting all this stuff that Intel's real. Uh... Mastermind was literally around these these parts and you would go and record actually at Herbie's house. Well, as I said, I was into the rapping before, yeah. but I kind of put it aside to concentrate on the breaking. Mm. Same with like I put the other dances aside to concentrate on the breaking, mm. like the popping and the locking, um, to really expand on those. But I did a couple of radio jingles mm. for Mastermind, mm. for... Um, which was a sound. Steve, Steve Devon's. They were a yeah, sound Steve system. Devon. They were the number one sound system back in the days for soul funk and into hip hop. Mm. Yeah, but soul funk, number one set. Mm. Simple as. Mm. Simple as, hands down. And Pirate Radio back then, their show was big. I used to listen to them before mm. I met them. Steve Devon as well. He was associated with them a lot, but he was a big DJ mm. by himself mm -hmm. as such. You get me? Those were big names to me when I listened to the radio then to try and find this hip hop because mm. it wasn't too much of it around it was like then. A finding, wasn't it? Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, Mastermind was, to my understanding, was very much the entry hole for a lot of people to pair up with you. There was a combination that went down in the clubs. London All Stars was also a thing, and I'm not sure whether this correlates timeline wise, but again, just as somebody on the outside looking in to the age I was, these were the real pivotal, like, um, Endorsers, it became that it was quite a commercial, had a commercial reach. These these names and brands. Well, this is what I mean. There was it was a very big explosion. It was pretty much kind. It reminds me like how it is now. It's mm. it's very out there. It's very blingy. It's very respected. There's mm. a lot of work happening, mm. um, and it's buzzing. Mm. Um, so mastermind number one set and sound. Simple as that, really. Mm. Um, back then we had house parties. Lots of house parties. Where you hear about a house party now? Mm. Do you know what I mean? That was the rave. Mm. Um, very few clubs at the time. A lot of outdoor jams and stuff in mm. the summer and open park stuff. Mad. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Those sort of things when the weather's good. Yeah. And that was a magical summer. Even the weather was good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Whoa. And they played clubs. So, yeah. Um, and there was a lot of them. So, sometimes they distribute. Here and there, it wouldn't really? be the whole crew. They build different clubs everywhere. in different they times. There might be they? different clubs, different That's times. Happened. Sometimes they're playing just yeah. soul. Sometimes they're playing just funk. Mm. Sometimes they're just playing hip hop. Sometimes they play a mixture. They could do whatever. But that's what made the, that's what gained them notoriety in a really quick way. And I think that's the best thing about crews is like you know you can dispatch different genres, different places, different locations in one weekend. And then come together like Voltron, dangerous. If you got it like that. Yo. Well, this is London All-Stars, yeah? yeah? At the end of the day, you had to be a star of London to be a London All-Star. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Special T, RIP. RIP. Big shout out to the fabulous, fresh, flying, Flipski, done though. Come on. And his brother, Danny F, the elusive and the exclusive. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to my sidewalk big brother, Dennis Charles. Dennis Charles. And last but not least, well, not last but not least, Millie Milton. Yeah, Millie the Kid. He mm. never really stuck with his name. He was always Milton. Mm. But Millie the Kid, I told you, but stick with Millie the Kid. Mm. That sounds like you're a proper bad boy shooter yeah, from out west. Like you get me? Any <laughs> showdown out here. <laughs> but Milton. And then last but not least, King B. Mm. Yeah? Mm. So that's the that's the that's the uh, oh that's London All Stars. Yeah. They forget about the poppers as well, um, Dennis Charles uh, mm. and Danny Francis. But 
That's for London All Stars. Hold tight, Danny Francis. I saw him perform, and this is again, this is where my DNA kicks in. Ninety-seven, fresh ninety-seven. I saw that. I saw this all go down, and I met a guy. I mean, I don't know, man. I, I like a guy. I, I'm, I'm middle. I'm middle of the age, so I flip between these two worlds, and and that that for me was definitely a crossroad of getting to know my history. That's my London All Star brother, oh, my guy, Danny yeah. F. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy. But yeah, um, London All Stars. See, this is another reason why I'm king of the cobbles. Yeah? <laughs> I did it on you mans twice. Mm-hmm. First I stepped on the scene. Look how I stepped on the scene. I murked a Don. Yeah, when I walked past him and we walked past each other, Howard, the one who was always telling me there's this magical place you can go to make breakdance and you, want, you could do, make money from breakdance. He never took me. And I stopped training with him. Like, mm. you don't even break. You can't even break, really. Do you get me? I'm mm. only on this breaking thing anyway. Do mm. you get me? Mm. But you never took me to this magical place. I met these guys that night before. They took me the next day. But at the same time, let's respect now. Let's give that B-boy respect. I showed and proved. Mm. That was a battle. Went in. I just murked Diamond Eddie Dennis. I didn't know that he had a name on road. Yeah? Mm-hmm. He was hot on road. And his Micron crew. I just murked Diamond Eddie Dennis. It was like a burnt offering to my new crew. And now I'm here with Sidewalk. Like a prospect yeah? and a champion. Yeah, now that I'm here with it. Sidewalk, yeah? That's why I'm a Merca Don. It all happened one day when I murked a Don. And ever since then, I've been murking Dons. <laughs> yeah, comment below. You know what we're doing here. We're talking, we're talking about historical reference points here. <sighs> Dolby D, man. One more thing. Sorry, hold that yeah, thought. Yeah, do, do. London All-Stars. Let's get this right. If you want to talk history... Kids, yeah, when it comes to this breaking thing, yeah, you lot need to know yourself. London All Stars was the first crew to bring back an international medal for breaking at the Swatch World Championships. Yeah, it's well documented. That's why we was on Blue Peter. Yeah, and all those other good things because we brought back an international medal for the UK. The first. So like I said, in the beginning, <laughs> there was the whole <laughs> So Sidewalk, now we're London All-Stars. And I started that crew, that's my crew. And I wanted to start it based on the fact that anyone could have a chance to be a London All-Star. It just means you've got to be from London and you've got to be a bad man B-boy. It really wasn't all about the TV and the fame and all that, Yeah. It was just about being a bad man B-boy because I know I knew sooner or later the real battles are coming. Mm. Yeah, see, by the time it got to Electro Rock, look up Electro Rock, yeah, 1985, a happening at Hippodrome mm. in West End mm. back in 1985, big happening, lots of players in that, Broken Glass, yeah. B-boys, Wolverhampton, wow. do you get me? Mm. Lots of, this is when, as I said, the big battles are coming. The Northern Hordes are coming. Rock City, Nottingham. Mm. Broken Glass, Manchester. Yeah? The B-Boys, Wolverhampton. Talk that shit. Yeah? They're coming. Mm. Yeah? Mm. <laughs> They're descending on London. Mm. Yeah? I'll fight your turf now. That's the game. That's the fun. Yeah? Burn or be burnt. Mm. If you burn me, I'll shake your hand and take my burning. I know a lot of men can't take their burning. Yeah? But you got to be able to take it. I've been burnt before. I took it. Big shout out to Powerful Green. New York City, baddest man in BK, NYC, and one of the baddest in NYC in the 80s. Done no. Yeah? Peace, God. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 5% nation. Do you get me? One of the most respected men in the 5% nation from Brooklyn, let alone one of the baddest B-boys back then. One of my mentors in the game. The landscape was hella different back there. Now, I can imagine the Hippodrome being quite, notor- like, Soho of its time. That... That, this is, this it's was West a, One, yeah, Hippodrome. Man, dangerous, man. It's West One, Hippodrome. It's a major happening. This is a film that they were making to, I think it was to, you know, like when they used to show movies mm. back then, they'd have like a trailer film. Mm. It'd be something about yeah, yeah, something yeah, yeah, or yeah, another. Yeah, yeah. And then you get the main movie. It's yeah. meant to be something like that, shown around the world sort of thing. Mm. And mainly Europe, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, that was happening. But the main thing about that happening was the fact that these other bigger crews are all going to be in the same mm. vicinity. All this the top shotters dangerous. from all the major cities in the UK 
are going to be in the same place. Yeah, and there's going be to crazy. be a messy battle at the end. The, 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 the tension, you could cut, cut it with a knife. Yeah? yeah. And there was this moment. There was a moment downstairs as we was ready to come up in the elevated stage. Oh, I love the elevated stage. That's how we was coming. That's how the London All Stars are coming up. We're waiting there to come up. We had for lift to come down. I love that shit. And there's the Northerners there. Yeah. It was like the Warriors. Yeah, yeah, I know the you Warriors. You know the Warriors. I know the feeling going up that elevator yeah. as well. It's fucking amazing. You got all the gangs. And they're all there waiting they for you. They were all there, Yo. sort of there, scattered around there. Yeah? And they were looking at us, yeah. They were looking at us. And one's gone, one's gone, one cheeky one. He's gone, we want you, Dolby. We want you, Dolby. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. And the next one's gone, yes, right, we want you, Dorby. I said, oh yeah, you want a piece of me, do you? You're gonna get it, yeah, yeah, yeah. We want you, Dorby. We want you, Dorby. They all started chatting, you're gonna get all you also. I said, yeah, you're gonna get a piece. As the lift was going up, yeah, you're gonna get us when you. <laughs> but all in good jest and good fun. No real Precious animosity, real. but real B boy things. That's, that's, that's that real B boy shit, you know what I'm saying? Man. That's some London All-Star B-Boy yeah. shit. Repping London town. Come on. And to me, it was like, yeah, I always represent South East London. We know that's, that's a whole different planet. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But London is mine. Conquered the SE. Mm -hmm. For me, it was conquering London. Because once you've conquered that... I was too young to conquer the rest of the UK, or try, mm. should I say. But all it takes is to conquer but your London, own But London, yeah. anywhere, everywhere. Mm. I'm trying to, I'm in them circles, in them ciphers, looking to see who's, who, who's doing what and looking to other man's who I think is good. Rampage. Yeah. Rampaging them. So the Rocksteady battle, that wasn't really a big battle as such, but we had a, we had a few little tay to tays but it mm. didn't really end. So I know people go on with the hype with Rocksteady. Mm. And it is hype. It was a very hype day for me. Mm. Yeah, it was like, wow. I, just, mm. I watch you guys on TV every day. And I'm seeing yeah. them in the flesh now. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo. I was pause, pause, yeah. push it pausing. Pause you all of that. Yeah, it like, it's them. Yeah. Right? And then it's a battle. Like, oh, my days. Yeah. I got a rep. But I have no problems repping. Do you get me? Mm. But there's other stuff that's real London town stuff that holds just as much weight and meaning to me like battling the Breakazoids from North London. That's another big heavyweight crew at the time, early oh, London Hong town. Breakazoids, Breakazoids, North wow, London. Okay. Yeah. Intel, Intel, go on. All right. Battling them with Sugar Pop from the Electric Boogaloos. <laughs> Those who know, know. <laughs> Me and Sugar Pop were chilling together and breaking together in that summer in 83. This is after we met them at Carnival. 1983. Yeah. And then we, you know, I thought I was the shit. Yeah, and I'm with Sugar Pop as well, so I'm definitely the mm. shit, yeah? <laughs> All right? Mm. Electric ballroom. See a man breaking. Got to go in there, innit? Mm -mm. Next man comes out. Like, whoa, he was good too. Next man come out. He was good too. Me and Sugar Pop are going in. These mans were good. Mm -mm. I had to be like, who are these mans? Yeah. Breakazoids, North London. Oh, tight. Yeah? Battling... DJ Billy Business. Hold tight. Billy Back then Billy's. known as Spider Billy of the Live to Break yeah. crew. Yeah? At Lyceum. Top of top, man. At Lyceum. Mm. To me, this was what I call the battle for who rules London town. Really? Because around that time now, there was kind of talk and whisper on the street that Dolby isn't all he is anymore. He's not the Dolby of old. There's people better than him now. <laughs> and such talk. And I knew that talk and I heard that whisper. And I said to myself, man's got to step up his game. Because it's going to come a time when there's going to be a battle. Mm -hmm. I'm not going out there now because I'm already Dolby D. You done know, yeah? To be looking to seek and destroy, man. But if you want it, you can get it. It's a real talk, isn't it? If you man? want it, come and get it. God, I love that isn't shit. It? Yeah? Mm. I knew there'd be a time. But at the same time, there's still that. If you're saying something and I'm hearing mm. this name all around town, I'm going to come for you. Yeah. Let's go. I came for a man. His name was King B, who later became a London All-Star because he had such a name on road. I heard it everywhere. King B, he's meant to be that. He's, meant to be, he's better than Dolby. Mm -hmm. I didn't like that. That didn't feel good to me. And he called himself King. Are you? 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, this was not going to be a simple podcast, boy. It's Africa Ben Bar and the Soul Sonic Force live on stage for the first time in London town at Lyceum. It's the Jammy Jam. Everyone's going to be there. That's what I said back in the days when it was a ting, mm. everyone was at mm. the ting. Mm. Mm. Do you know who's in the house? There's stars that weren't quite stars then. Oh, shit. Do I see Rodney P and Bionic in the house? Yo. Oh, shit. Do I see Cookie Crew in the house? Oh, shit. Is that Billy Business in the house? Mm. Oh, mm. shit. Is that Cutmaster Swift in the house, a.k.a. Johnny with the dope mills? Oh, shit. Is that Sipo in the house? Yo. Yeah. Mm. It's that type of dance. Mm. I understand. You don't know. You don't know who the king is. Mm. London All Stars are coming from a show out in countryside somewhere. It's a nice one, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Guest list on the door. On, popping. The jam's already on, we're coming in late. Mm. I heard the man's over there. What, this King Breaker? What is it? Over there. Mm. Excuse me. Are you King Breaker? Mm. Is that I go, Zed, you want a battle? He goes, oh, I don't want I don't want a battle. I goes, Zed, you want a battle, bro? He goes, who are you? What do you mean, who am I? You heard me on the radio. You see me on a TV show. <laughs> I'm Dolby D. He goes, oh, you're Dolby, you're Dolby. Um, no, 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 I mean saying, I goes, that's what I've been hearing. Mm-hmm. Mind you now, he's surrounded by the Live to Break crew. What's that Live to Break? Ooh. I mean, come on now, this is not a cuss, guys. This is just the way I saw it. Tottenham to our arsenal. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Yo, shut, shut, shut. Surrounded shut, by shut. all of them, yeah? But I don't business. Where do you want to battle? No, I don't want to battle, Dolby. I don't want to battle. But that's what B-boys do. We battle. I heard you're meant to be all that. I think I'm all that. Mm. Let's have it. No, Dolby. I don't want to battle, Dolby. <laughs> I respect you, Dolby. No, Dolby. <laughs> What's the guy to do, eh? Mm-hmm. I turn around. Like, what's the guy to do, eh? Don't want to battle. But either way, I've quashed that. I've stepped to that talk about this man's meant to be badder than me. Mm-hmm. I'm ready for whoever wants to talk that talk about who's badder than me. I'm on one tonight. Who wants it? That's my feeling, my mm-hmm. thoughts. And as I said, I stepped to this one who had the big name on road. I call him the people's champion. Because the people wanted him to burn me. But I'm the real champion. Okay, you didn't want a piece of it. Yeah, exactly. Do you feel that, um, Dolby? Because on a, on a level, the notoriety that you have, do you feel like your reputation precedes you? Do you feel like sometimes... And or also, do you feel like you're often misunderstood by the outspokenness that, that you may have, whether it's online or whether it's on the, in a club or where, in an interview and stuff? Do you ever find that reputation... I certainly do. I certainly do. Lots of things. Yeah. Like, even back in the days. It was Dolby. It wasn't me, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it must be quite hard. It was do- Dolby shot JFK. <laughs> I wasn't even born then. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, does, it, does it challenge also, you? Are you challenged by that? Because you're an outspoken person. That comes with a lot of baggage and a lot of um, weight. That's, that's a very deep, deep question, Killer. Sincerely. Mm. Because... I did come into a lot of that with regards to this b-boy world and certain people being very jealous and envious of my natural position Mm -hmm. in this b-boy game, Mm. yeah, when it comes to London town, UK. Um, To the point where I have certain, like, for instance, the Olympics. Mm. Now, to me... It's a cool thing. It's another thing. But it's not the pinnacle of this dance. And certain rules they're bringing in with it with regards to certain expressions that are natural in this culture and this mm. dance, like you can't grab the dick and do sexual movements or other stuff or violent stuff and stuff like that. Even to the point of what you're wearing, I think there's some shit about that. Is but that anyway. Really interesting. Uh-huh. I get it. And you want to, you obviously want to quantize it into this marks and a system mm. and blah, blah, blah. That's all cool and everything. Yeah. But you still have to have someone 
who knows what they're talking about and knows this dance, sitting there, putting them points in or doing whatever system. Or if we go back to the tried and tested method of pointing. Mm. Who you thought won. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm. Either way, it should be someone worthy to sit in that hot seat. And this is one of the things I said that came into a big war from and lots of bullshit happened with me with regards to this. And it was very misunderstood. And people kind of jumped on it in crowd people because they're doing things and jealous that, ah, oh, all I do is give it large about myself and I don't do nothing. Like, I ain't done nothing for this scene to help it build it again in from fucking 1999. With fucking teaching for free, never open the school, talk for free where the B-boys hang out. Yeah, even chipped in for the practice spot sometimes. You get me? I didn't go there preaching. I'm Dolby D, everyone listen to me. No one, no, 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 these kids didn't know who I was. But they saw me do what I was doing and asked me how I did it. And I showed them. Do you get me? Mm. Not trying to own no one or nothing. Do you get me? Just spreading the love of the culture. Yeah, and, and feeding their, their enthusiasm for the dance. A lot of judging for free. Oh, there's not much in the game right now. And, 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 and judge for free all the time. Do you get me? But as the game's getting bigger now, I'm doing interviews and stuff like yourself, talking mm -hmm. about the culture mm -hmm. and stuff to spread the, 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 mm -hmm. the culture. Yeah. yeah? Um, and not saying, never saying I'm right and my way is this way and just how I see it because I participated. I was a real fucking B-boy. Yeah, I really did the thing. You need someone sitting in that judge's chair that knows the thing. Where should old school B-boys go to? You expect them to be just dancing for their dinner for the rest of their lives and expect you to be impressed by their throwdown when they've been teaching masterclasses and got videos out there that you've been learning off and vibes enough. And you expect them to do that till they're all old and everything, otherwise they're not worth of respect. What is that? Why, why, um, <clears throat> why the... They should go to the judge's hot seat by yeah, being a yeah. badass B-boys. And to me... The judge's hot seat, the B-boy's judge's hot seat is for badass B-boys past and present. To me, if it was in a competition and that, I'd always want to be judged by my elders. I would love to be judged in a competition by, by Rocksteady and whoever came before me. Rather than peers or people that I know it's on my level that break that ain't even half as good as me. Casting a, and you put it into yeah. this judge's system, then what, what does that lead to? Then you're going to get to a system a system, then you're gonna to have to learn to qualify to be a referee, to qualify to learn this system and use this system because this system now is the one being used by the Olympics and the endorsements and blah, 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 blah. And that's the way to get to big money yeah, yeah. and make it go a bit whatever. That's all cool. But my, my, my th yeah, absolutely. But you know what? I think there is a, a, a silver lining in this cloud right now. And I think you've actually alluded to it. And also the kind of conversation we had up till we, press record on everything there's a window of opportunity here like if you've got the brit school you also have the grit school and what's to say that there isn't a there is they're building a hip-hop academy mm. along with this part of the olympics breaking thing and the hip-hop mm. dance academy hip-hop academy type mm. thing and they're actually building that and are you a part of this? Well, no, I'm not. And this is another reason with regards to what I'm saying about your question with regards to how the culture treated me after I was so benevolent to them. And see, people, like my reputation perceives me, whatever. sometimes people just believe automatically, oh, Dolby, they said Dolby did this. No, oh. Even though you might know me, you don't come say, Dolby, did this, blah, blah, blah. You just automatically believe it. Are you opening a conversation here? Um, and I'm not putting words into your mouth. For, far from that, but I think this is a good opportunity to, because I don't know entirely what you're talking about, but um, what you're alluding to is there's some sort of kind of disparity between one camp and another camp and how you've kind of been sidelined from, from, a, from a, a vital piece of a, of a, a more future, future forward puzzle. Are we suggesting that, and I, I'm hoping you are, that you'd be open to a, a more uh, uh, mature uh open space conversation where you could talk this thing through and maybe maybe there's a maybe there's an opportunity here where you could kind of be a part of the 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 the, the moving forward of, of I think you summed it up. Am I I'm, in the right I place? I think here? you summed it up what you I'm, talked I'm about. No, I, think, I think carefully. the way you summed it up there what I'm talking about without getting into details yeah. and stuff. With regards to where it goes from here, you'd be up for whether it. I should be part of it or not or right. blah blah blah. As far as I'm concerned, I'm Dolby D. I should be the head coach for the Olympic team, actually. 
But I've said that way back and that everyone knows that's how I am and that's how I go on. And everyone knows I'm quite capable. It's nothing to me. Yeah, it's fun to me. Yeah, but will I get that? That's the way I see myself. Will I get that? I doubt that very much because of certain people in politics that's gone on with regards to deliberately trying to keep Dolby out because they know if the Dolby's in there, he's going to get everything. Because it's naturally mine. Are you a team player, Dolby? Yeah. Do you see yourself as a team player? Because like in what I'm hearing here, I totally feel you. But then there's, there's elements that are always in play within a team aspect of business or whatever. You kind of got a you've got to own the position you've got to take position and do you think you're do you think you're able to do that knowing full well of all the history that you've had and also by the sounds of it some other crossroads where you you may have had conflicted interests with other people but do you think in 2022 to 2024 there, there's a there's not only a because there clearly is a place for you at the table I, you know what I mean through this conversation alone but do you think you'd be able to are you malleable enough as a character to fit in within a team as aspect well I can get along with people so it's not a question that yeah, you're but, yeah but BS is BS do you see what I mean <sighs> I'm sidewalk crew that's a crew yeah 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 we did true. pretty well London All Stars but also in a business that's a crew but, yeah, but that was business too mm. do you know what I mean but I do find and it has turned into it's hard to trust people. It's hard to accomplish things with people, I find. Mm -hmm. This is just me personally, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, I don't think I'm maybe the best judge of character and whatnot. I kind of take people at face value and kind of just believe people that their mm -hmm. word is their word and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, generally, I think, which has got me into certain trouble, where people have more nefarious um, agendas about you and what they want from you or why they're interacting with you. Mm. And especially in showbiz. Um, so it has turned into general only one Dolby, Jedi Knight, Sith Slayer, mm. that crazy old coot talking about the Force. And you, and but Jedis. you're not, but you're not. Yeah, no, I'm just saying it has yeah. turned into that. But okay. you see, at first, that's how he looked. But look at what he really was. Mm. Look at what he really became. He taught Anakin. Do you and see I, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And this is, yeah? this is the he bit. helped blow up the Death Star. And bro, this is where <laughs> this is where as a yeah, and this, and this is where it gets slightly grey for me because, for me, uh, in this land of opportunity, and it would be a crying shame for whatever was the past or whatever was whatever did unfold. It would be such a crying shame not to keep them flowers in the right place and not have you be. Represented not only in yourself properly, but also as a as an outward to the international world that that break dancing is about. This came from this. This is how it's represented. It'd be crying shame not to have Dolby there. You know what? I was happy with what I done in the eighties. I was more than happy with it. And then seeing the emergence of it coming back a lot more. 90s, getting a bit hotter, mm. 2000s, and mm. to the point it's got now, boiling over. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I liked, I, I just liked the fact that it was going on. And I was just happy to go to a club and, and go to a jam and see, about, see battles or people jamming and just see it going on and be happy with it going on. But the kids were always talking about a teacher and, and learning, and we're crap now, Britain are crap now, and all the other nations are better than us, and blah, blah, blah. Whereas to me, it was like, wow, what kind of talk is that? We yeah. was like, to us, we felt like we was only second to America. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But now everyone's everyone's better than us, and we're crap? What the hell? And there's a compromise that pe people have I wanted have to help out. That. Yeah, you want to, you want to throw and take it to the limit? No, the, I, I the just limit. wanted to help out where I could, and focus, obviously, on London, not as I'm on this quest mm. or whatever. I just liked it, being around it. I like, and then I like teaching it mm. and helping people out and become good. And that, that was it really. But then it escalated again. Lots of interviews, mm. people wanted to judge, judge here, judge there, mm. do this, do I've got a regular job. Mm. Yeah, I'm not Mr. Showbiz in terms of that's not what I do for a living. Mm. Yeah, um, I'm a computer programmer. Mm -hmm. um, so I got a normal sort of job in that. But I'm Dolby D. Mm. I'm still Dolby D. Do you get me? I like these things, I go to these things mm. and where I can help out in the culture and mm. that. I like hanging out on the floor and rolling around the floor, mm. with these kids and showing them how it's done mm. and so on. I like all that, even practicing myself. The, once again, it's, it's very, 
what's the word, euphoric. I just, I, there's a little bit of fire that even by this conversation now, I, I want, I really hope and want that to be represented in the, the team over here. And, and when, when I... Th- when we hop back to this podcast in a few months when we listen back, <laughs> well, I just feel like if I don't bring this up now, I, I, I'll be kicking myself. Whatever there is animosity-wise, I think the fire that you have needs to be harnessed and represented in some capacity within the team. And, and however that those bridges or whatever it is you're talking about is, is forged and fixed and made um, permanently better, I think the sooner the better for that. Well, you know what, Killer? I really appreciate those thoughts and that but it's been a lot of water under the bridge since then and I'm cool with it because I know I spoke my truth. Like even back then I was speaking for B-Boys, talking about how little they get paid and they're the whole show of it Mm. and the whole competition of it and they get paid very little for what it is Mm. and what money's generated from it. Mm -hmm. Even I heard a a big time B-Boy, a big time B-Boy because right now the whole holy grail was making a living mm. from just breaking. Mm. That's the carrot on the string. That was the holy grail. Mm. Mm. It's becoming a possibility now with Red Bull mm. All-Stars. Yeah, now Mon- yeah. Monster have gone for, mm. for some as well. Mm. But I even had one of the Monster All-Stars. Oh, what's his name? I'm sure it's... Mm. Even he was complaining about they don't get paid enough. They should be getting paid like some UFC fighters mm. and stuff. As good as he's getting paid and as top of the food chain as he is in terms of earning a living from just breaking, yeah, and battling, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the life, yeah. He's still complaining that it's not enough money. And once again, I feel it isn't. I, I'm totally with that, because I was like that from before. What, you come from wherever, you win the world championship, and you know, your, your crew is taking away 5K or 8K. What the hell is that? Mm. Do you know how hard you got to train to be that good at breaking. Back breaking levels, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've got to train like any wow. world-class athlete. Mm. Yeah, we see them world-class Olympic athletes and that. They train, they get up like five in the morning, that's do some hours. Are, that's what sponsorship's for. Do so some hours. Supported. Then they eat, mm. have a little rest. Then they're training again. Then they eat, have a little rest. Then they're training again. And then they go to bed early. Then they get up and do it all again. They're watching what they eat. They're watching what they don't eat. Yeah? All them things. It's a lot. Wow. Yeah, they're studying the thing. That's what they do all, that's how you produce a world-class athlete. People used to go, why? The only thing people say about the times now, and they see breaking now compared to back in the days. Oh, look at these sick things they're doing. Oh, they're so sick. Oh, they're better than humans and blah, blah, mm. blah. And it's like, well, look what they've got to build on. Look at all the history they have mm. to build on mm. to make them what they are now. Yeah. Same like we had a little bit of thing to make ourselves whatever then and so mm. on. And things got more and more. So there's more vibes and more whatever. And then the internet, it's out there. People do a dope throwdown. It's out on YouTube the next day. You get to see that fresh stick the next day. Mm-hmm. Back in the days, you didn't get to see a fresh style until you saw that fresh style in that yeah, circle. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> so the history, again, again, just the history of History it all is led very to this important. Point. Yeah, and it's all led to this point. But there's so much history, it's where do you look? And what do you think, do you think moving forward, I mean, actually, that really just draw on the question, what is the future for you? What is the future for you? And where do you see it? Because obviously we're talking about some future forward stuff right now, and, <laughs> and some of which we can never determine, you know, five years from now, we're going to look back at this and say, yeah, I told you so, Dolby's in, <laughs> he's in, and, and the Olympics is ours and shit. You like, want the exclusives. Yeah, what's the future, man? Um, well, as I said, I'm always Dolby D. Mm. Whatever I do, I'm always Dolby D. Um, I don't. I don't mean in terms where I need to be street and be boyed out, but it's just that that's just me. Mm. I know how to talk proper in the right atmosphere, blah blah mm. blah. But the b boy being rapping and blah blah blah, that's just me. So I'll always be doing something with it. I think because I look how old I am now and I'm still doing it and I still, still love smacking it. it. Still and it's never. Do. It's never about. It's not about going out there or proving someone. Just just for myself. Do you know what I mean? It's good mm. for me. Um, so I I like the music. That's a lot easier than breaking. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, the music. They, they don't break nothing. Yeah, I like um, producing as mm. well as creating songs and, and writing. I like that and making videos and stuff. I don't, I ain't really at the level with music in terms of touring and doing shows and all that. That's not really a big thing for me, mm. really. But I like making the I like making the music and I like making the, the visuals behind it and putting it out there, see what the people think. I like that. 
obviously I don't teach breaking too much now. Um, I've done a lot of that over the years and I just needed a break from all of that, mm. really. Um, but obviously I keep up with watch certain things and that. But to me, breaking is just in me. It's like, yeah, okay, and I see things there and again. But I don't have to be on it, on it. Mm. And once again, the world is so big now and, it, and everything's in play now. Everything's in play. So um, there's niches within niches. Yeah, even. it always is. Same Do you music. see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Everything is so big now. I feel like beatboxing. Mm. Before it was um, Dougie Fresh and the Fat Boys. Mm. Then no, later, like then later on, now. who came? Um, was it Supernatural? No, I forget his name, but mm -hmm. other beatboxes come there. But at first, it was those two big names. Mm. Yeah? But then, uh, now those be Killer Keller. And, uh, I don't even know, because mm. I'm not totally in that world. But certain people will shine mm. in that world that general people yeah, will know. Yeah, that's right. Hit Killer Keller, beatboxer, mm. general people know. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Hitting the echelon of like... Right. Yeah. yeah. And plus, you're now. Mm. Not too many people will know a Dougie Fresh or yeah. a Fat Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's but people above no, me that don't know that. Yeah, right. Totally there's no. There's no. No disrespect. Oh, yeah. It's just that that's the, their time span. That's right. Do you get me? But one day they may find it mm. and appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. One day, like you found me, mm. they might find a Dolby and appreciate a Dolby. So well. if the break, if something. You know, if anything interesting comes up, and since the after the 80s, no matter what someone's like asked me to do and stuff, they've always asked me to do. I've never, like you've asked me, mm. yeah? I've never put a CV out. I've never pressured anyone, mm -hmm. let me do this, let me do that. They've always asked mm -hmm. me to do whatever because of who I am and what I've done and the reputation. And it's very pleasing to me within this, this year of my age, yeah, that I'm still known and respected and recognized for the ting. Yeah. That I've actually did what I wanted to do with the ting in the first place and be always known for that old school day dot bad man b-boy. Yeah, back in the days, back in the days, oh, Dolby D. Yeah, he was dope, yo, blah, 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 London town, da, 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 da. It's like, it's very pleasing Humbly pleasing to know that, wow, I'm on. Killer Keller's called me to do an interview. Like, oh, I am totally like, doing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> wow, I, do you see what I'm saying? That yeah, well. and I don't feel like uh, uh, Dolby's, he's just trapped in the past. All he does is talk about nah. it. And back in the day, I don't feel it's that. I feel, yeah, you do want to talk to me about that because I can talk about mm. it. But I can still talk about 2000s, 90s, mm. the, 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 the at whatever level I can talk about it at. Do you see what I mean? Mm. Or whatever interest I have in it, for whatever it's worth. Do you get me? But 80s, day dot, yeah, I, I'm going to hold that very dear to my heart. Mm. Yeah? You can't get, listen, you can't get a Covent Pass. There's no new Covent Passes being issued. <laughs> yeah? You've either got one or you ain't. And they're not transferable. Mm. You can't lend your Covent Pass to an <laughs> eight. <Until> you, man. <laughs> And again, you got a pass. <laughs> you got a pass. Brother, it's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, sir, thank you very much. Thank sir. you so much for the comfort like legacy holding in here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been history lessened and then some by the the general Dolby D inside the place. If you don't know about his character, you do now. Um, and what the future holds for breakdance will only be seen. Seen through the lens of this and many, but the buck stops here. Dolby D, thank you so much for Thank you very much, brother. Killer Keller. It's Respect. Killer. Keep doing your thing. Let's do a song one day. Yo! Hit it! <laughs> <laughs> Killer Keller podcast. Our lighting was our fashion. You stay lucky. People don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Dolby. Peace. Peace. Easy. Woo!